Is Union Square becoming the next Zuccotti Park? Well, a lot of Occupy Wall Street protesters think so as they prepare to camp out here overnight. I was arrested last night uh, just for sleeping on, on the bench. Oh no, deja vu all over again. Some Occupy Wall Street protesters tonight are bragging about how many times they've been arrested this week as they try to spend another night in Union Square. Yoni happily showed pictures. I mean, I have plenty of bruise marks all over my back and over my uh, arms. Um, the first arrest was absolutely insanely brutal. Does it worry you that it's costing taxpayer dollars to pay for the police to move you around all night long? Yeah, without a doubt, because I do pay taxes, and uh, like everybody else. And uh, there is, I feel, a lot of wasted money because it's over... Overzealous. This seems to be too much police here. The system is racist. Earlier, Occupy Wall Street protesters marched from Zuccotti to one police plaza. Some were upset about the police shooting of an unarmed man in Inwood last fall. Others were upset about other alleged police brutality cases here and across the country. But all said Police Commissioner Ray Kelly's got to go. Why? The corruption in this city, with the police brutality, and the police forcing marches and people in occupied Wall Street to look like we're a bunch of scavengers and uh, third world people, you know, it's wrong. And as is often the case with Occupy Wall Street, practically every protester had his or her own agenda. Let me ask you, is today's rally here about police brutality or just about anything that everyone at Occupy Wall Street wants to talk about? It's about changing the world. We're taking control. The people. Sorry. Sorry, 1%. It's that time. For me, the platform is homelessness and how to address that and how to create policy change that move everything forward in a positive line. So far today, police have arrested at least 10 Occupy Wall Street protesters for disorderly conduct. But as many people here say, the night is young. From Union Square, McGee Hickey, PIX11 News just been going on so long. I'm very, very tired. Mary Lou Cuomo says she's been waging an eight-year battle against her neighbor, the neighbor this used car dealership that Huntington Town has labeled the most egregious flaunter of town code. It shouldn't be in this neighborhood because this is obstructing my view as a, in a residential area. And um, uh, he has a temporary restraining order on, uh, that he not to do business to begin with. The sign says Hot Deals Depot here in Huntington Station, but the town of Huntington and several neighbors say this is no place for a commercial establishment. The owner is John Mastriani. The town says he has no permits for his business and could be liable for $1.4 million in fines. What happened last week has us even more angered. Huntington Town spokesman A.J. Carter says Mastriani put up steel beams and is constructing a new building without permits and the town may take drastic action. And wanting to go back to court to think of what we can do to get another court order that this time would allow the county sheriff to come in and padlock the operation. Mastriani's attorney says this is zoned commercial property and he's been trying to file for permits over a year and the town refuses to accept his applications. Civic groups, however, say zoning violations like these happen too often. The Greater Huntington Civic Group is really not surprised by a situation like this. Uh, code enforcement issues come into our offices all the time. In Huntington Station, Drew Scott, News 12 Long Island. I write down every bill John Kelly can tell you how much it costs to run his hop hog home down to the penny. Every detail is in this notebook. My taxes, my electric, how much uh, gas I'm using. If something doesn't look, uh, look right, I'm going to catch it right away. And before it gets out of hand. Before it gets out of hand. Now he wants to know what happened with Suffolk County's finances, and he's not the only one. As we told you yesterday, County Exec Steve Ballone announced a fiscal emergency with a possible $530 million deficit by the end of next year. Who didn't do their job and got away with it? Today, several legislators blamed the prior administration, saying former county exec Steve Levy's team That's wasn't always up front about the county's fiscal situation. Yes, we knew. We knew that there were deficits because we knew that the county executive's budget was wrong. And we stated that, we shouted it to the high heavens. But Levy has said that lawmakers are to blame for passing a temporary budget last year that eliminated hundreds of proposed layoffs. News 12 political analyst Larry Levy says when it comes to the county budget, everyone has been in denial. I don't think that anybody was lying. I don't think that anybody was covering anything up. It was all out there for people to see, but they didn't want to see it. 
And if they saw it, they didn't want to act on it because raising taxes or cutting popular programs is a very difficult thing for a politician to do. They may have to start doing that. Ballone has said everything is on the table, a property tax hike, layoffs, and more. Today, he met with each of the county's 11 unions. Meantime, John Kelly still wonders this. Why do they let it go so long? Greed? I would say, yeah, uh, it has to be. Lorraine DeCandia is angry that her daughter can't afford the medicine she needs. 24-year-old Amanda is a junior at SUNY Stony Brook, despite a serious brain injury she suffered four years ago. It was here at the corner of Washington Avenue and Route 112 where Amanda suffered her serious brain injury in a car crash. Her future and her recovery says her mother is deeply dependent on her continuing to get her necessary medication. This is extremely, extremely crucial that my daughter gets this drug because she has to work 10 times as hard as other children. That helps me study and focus on what I need to focus on. Amanda's doctor prescribed daily doses of Dexedrine, a low-cost generic drug. But Lorraine says most pharmacies only carry the high-priced brand name version of the drug, which costs her $220 a month, and it's not covered by her insurance. We certainly can't afford to pay $220 per month. Pharmacists say low-cost generics just don't bring in the profits to the drug companies. They tend to a lot more towards the brand name because they make a higher profit. Um, so uh, as far as uh, dexedrine per se, that supply has been exhausted. Congressman Tim Bishop is considering legislation to help people in Amanda's situation. Bishop says he'll continue to push the federal agencies responsible to ensure patients have access to potentially life-saving treatments. I'm going to be continually recovering the rest of my life, and I want to do as much of that as I can. In Port Jeff Station, Drew Scott, News 12, Long Island.